Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to manage your Solana using the new Phantom Wallet. So let's get started. All right, so I'm here on the homepage of the uh, Phantom Wallet. Now this is a browser extension, which you can add to Chrome. Uh, it should also work in Brave browser. Uh, Brave is a Chromium based browser, so it should work in Brave as well. I'm using Brave, so we'll check it out. It can be configured as a standalone wallet so that you'll be given a recovery phrase, but you can also connect it to your Ledger device and manage your Solana with the uh, Ledger device in conjunction with Phantom Wallet. So I'll show you both ways to get that set up. And then we'll work a little with the wallet. Uh, now notice that uh, if you go over to Mango Markets, that uh, their default wallet is the Phantom Wallet. So uh, it's a pretty big exchange uh, to be using the Phantom Wallet. So that's a pretty good testament to how good this wallet is. So we're going to check it out today. First of all, I'll go ahead and add it. And I'll add to Brave. All right, and there we go. I've got the extension installed and I'm ready to set up the wallet. Notice you can restore this wallet using a recovery phrase if you already have a recovery phrase. But we're gonna create a new wallet. So we'll just hit create new wallet here and they're gonna give us this recovery phrase. Actually, it's a 12 word recovery phrase. So I'm gonna hit copy here and I'll paste it into a text document that I have over in, uh, that I'm saving on a flash drive. You don't wanna just leave this text document laying around on your desktop for someone to stumble upon, right? You wanna take great care with this. The most secure way to back up your phrase is to actually write it down on a piece of paper and don't let anyone see it. But if you've got a good computer and uh, you know good antivirus, good anti-malware, and you know you don't have any malware on your computer, then go ahead and copy it into your clipboard and paste it uh, into a text file. All right, and once you've got it stored safely and securely somewhere, go ahead and click OK, I saved it. And you can also create a password for this wallet. If it's a standalone wallet that's not connected to your Ledger device, I would advise you to use the password option because that encrypts it uh, on your hard drive where it's stored. It's pretty. It's stored in the uh, most likely in the uh, Chrome preferences, deep inside your file system. But you want to add this extra layer of security. All right, we'll go ahead and agree to the terms of service. I think you could click this link if you wish to read them. We'll hit save here. All right, and then uh, it's going to give you a keyboard shortcut when you're in the browser, the Alt-Up-P, Alt-Shift-P. will launch this wallet for you for Phantom. We'll hit continue here. All right, and then we're done. All right, so now we can just go up to our uh, browser and pull up the Phantom wallet. There it is up in the corner. All right, so as you can see, you access the wallet from your browser up here. This is the default screen where you'll send and receive Solana, right? And then over here is uh, where you can access your NFTs, your collectibles. And then here is a swap interface where we can swap Sol and other tokens. And then this would be our recent activity. All right, so I'll do a few transactions and get you started and show you how this all works. But let's explore the settings a little bit. If we go into settings, we can uh, save addresses if for commonly used addresses. We can also connect trusted apps, change the password, and also the auto lock timer. So if you'll notice the default is after 15 minutes, it's gonna lock again, and you'll need to re-enter your password. I'll just leave that, that's fine. And then we've got different networks, well, better to s stay on the main net. All right. And then also you can export the private key of this wallet. So if, for example, you wanted to have it in Chrome as well, you could export the private key and then import it. 
You can also see your recovery phrase by clicking here. And then you can also reset the recovery phrase of this particular wallet. All right, so I've got this wallet set up and then uh, I could deposit some soul in here, but I would also like to try the ledger based option. So uh, I'm gonna show you real quick. If you're gonna use this wallet, you'll probably wanna get uh, with your ledger device, you'll need to run over to your uh, ledger manager and uh, connect your device, of course. All right, my device is connected, my pin is entered, and it's asking me to allow Ledger Manager, so I'll hit both buttons to do that. Now you can see on mine that I already have the Solana app installed. If you don't have it installed over here in Manager, you can just search for it. All right, and then uh, if it's not installed on your device, you'll see an install button here. Just uh, run the installer and let it install the app on your device. Right. And then when you're done with that, you'll just exit Ledger Live. You don't need Ledger Live. Uh, you can't manage your Solana in Ledger Live. So the only reason you need Ledger Live is to get this app installed. Once it's installed, you're done with Ledger Live. So go ahead and close it because it might interfere with the wallet a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and enter the Solana app and be ready for this. So I'll go up here to the wallet management a hamburger menu where we can add uh, new wallets. So I'll hit add connect wallet and I'm going to use and this is where we would import the private key if you wanted to import a key in a different browser where we saw where you can export the key this is where you would import. We'll hit that connect hardware wallet. It sees my Ledger Nano that's cool. Alright we'll hit continue here. Right, that is the derivation path. That's the default derivation path. I would just leave it like that. Now I can pull down these different wallet addresses that are all associated with my Ledger Nano device. So, and I know some of them already have um, balances, right? So I'll choose the second one here. We'll hit add account and then we'll hit done. And then now we can go back over to the wallet here. And as I mentioned, there I knew there was a balance in my ledger already from a different wallet. So as you can see, you can uh, access any wallets that you have created on your ledger device. Uh, if it's your first time, it'll just be an empty uh, zero balance, which is fine. Yeah, and you can uh, add and subtract from from there. All right, and so you see now I've I can I've create multiple wallets that you can manage within this uh, wallet software, and you can switch between them. All right, and if you go over to the settings, you've got this edit field here. You can just change it if you want to name it something different. For example, we could call this one main wallet. And then uh, if we switch over to Ledger and go to Settings, I can change this to, I don't have to call it Ledger 1, I can just call it Ledger. And notice the, the name changes up here. So we can uh, create multiple wallets. Uh, we can uh, edit the names of the wallets. We can create wallets that are connected to uh, the Ledger device. And then we can also import wallet. So I'll, met, I'll show how that would work. So for example, I mentioned you know this main wallet when we started and we go to settings here. If we go to uh, export private key, you'll have to enter your password. All right, and then it reveals the private key which you can copy into your clipboard. Make sure you don't share this with anybody else. Uh, and then I can go over to the Chrome version of the wallet. And I can go up here to uh, add connect. And this time I'll do the import private key. Uh, we can call this wallet something else. We could call this one uh, main wallet. Just so that it has the same name as the one over in Brave. I'll paste in that private key and hit import. And there we go. And uh, you'll notice as we move forward that these two wallets will be synced up together. 
Now, uh, you might think, well, why would I want it in two different browsers? That's totally up to you. Uh, most likely, you would probably be doing this on a different computer. So if you wanted to manage the wallet that you have on your desktop at home on your laptop, then you could uh, import the wallet into your laptop browser so that you'll have uh, access to the wallet when you're at home and when you're uh, on the go with your laptop. All right, so let's go ahead and put a little Solana in this wallet. If we go to the CoinGecko page for Solana, we can scroll down here to Markets, and it'll show you all of the different places where you can buy Solana. You can buy it at a lot of different uh, exchanges. Uh, I'll just buy a little bit on Coinbase so we can demonstrate how this works. All right, so when you're on the Coinbase homepage, you can just hit Buy Sell and uh, switch over to Solana. You can type it in here. All right, we'll just buy $50 worth of Solana so I can do this example for you. We'll hit buy now. I'm using my bank account for this. All right, so I purchased some Solana. And you can probably trade a little cheaper over on Coinbase Pro, but you do have to wait for about six to seven days before you can withdraw. So I'm just going to show you how to do this on Coinbase. I did get a little bit of a merchant charge on Coinbase, but... It's a lot easier to use Coinbase and uh, you can withdraw right away. So what we want to do is get the address of the wallet that we're working in. So let's pull up the wallet. All right, there's our main wallet and we'll do receive. We'll choose the send from wallet or exchange because in this case we're sending from an exchange. All right, and then we'll hit copy to get the address of our phantom wallet. And then let's go over to Coinbase and do send all. The, just You can send as little or as much as you need, but I would suggest if you're, you have a lot of Solana on an exchange that you should do a small test transaction first into your new wallet to make sure everything goes as planned. So I'll paste in the address of that uh, phantom wallet there and hit continue. Oops. Okay, so uh, I'm a little below my minimum there. So uh, I'll go ahead and get a little more Solana. All right, so now I've got over that minimum that they want. Uh, now we'll hit send all. We'll paste in the address of our phantom wallet again. We'll hit continue. And then we're going to confirm that. There's a very small charge on the Solana network. We'll confirm again. And then I'll need to enter my two-factor authentication. Off it goes. Hit done. And then we can check over here in the wallet. And you can see that the Solana has arrived already. It's pretty easy, pretty quick. Notice up here they're also giving you the current price action of Solana, like the percentage that it's up today and the dollar amount that it's up today. It's a pretty good day for Solana. But... Uh, that's a nice little feature of this wallet to show you that. Well, there we go. So I don't have any NFTs right now. Uh, and if we wanted to trade a little bit, we've got a balance of Solana now. So if we had a mind to trade for any other tokens on the Solana network, we can do that here. So let's say we wanted to buy Serum with, uh, say, 0.5 of our Solana. That would net us these tokens. That would net us 4.76, right? There's the slippage rate, which you can adjust, and the estimated fees that we're going to pay in U.S. dollars for this trade. Let's hit uh, review order. And there we go. I'm going to trade my SOL for SRM. We'll hit swap. And then we can close that. And if we go back to the main part of the wallet, you'll see that I have uh, more than just Solana now. I've got the other tokens. And uh, I wanted to just point out, too, like uh, when, if we go back over to Chrome and we take a look at the Chrome version of uh, the Phantom, we'll enter our password. Notice that the Chrome version is now reflecting the current balance of my main wallet that I created. This would be uh, what would happen if you exported your private key and imported it to a different browser, maybe even on a different computer. So uh, because they're connected to the same wallet on the Solana blockchain, they'll always be in sync. 
right? So that's a pretty cool feature of this wallet, the ability to export and import the private keys. Now I thought maybe I could show you the same thing over on the ledger side of things. So if I switch over to my ledger based wallet, I can do something very similar. Uh, in that case, I will need to verify on the device whenever I make a trade. So uh, let's go ahead and go over here to the swap. Uh, they've already got the previous swap in there. That's fine with me. I'll use 0.5 to buy SRM again on my ledger. Pretty much I'll leave the settings the same. But in this case, I need to keep an eye on my device when I make this swap because I need to approve it on the ledger. So I'm going to scroll through using the metal button to look at all of the information about the trade. And then when I get to approve, I'll hit both buttons. And that should allow the swap to go through. It's a good idea to use your ledger with this wallet because the private keys for the wallet are stored on the ledger. Right? Now, and then you'll notice that I already had a little bit of Solana in this wallet, but I could have easily bought some Solana from Coinbase and added it to this wallet as well if you want to uh, add Solana from an exchange to this wallet. And then if we go over here, we should be able to see all of these transactions and we can check them in detail on the Solana blockchain. Like right here, I sent some uh, Solana. Right, and then you can just click on it. Oh, this will take you over to the Solana Explorer to get a better idea of what actually happened in that transaction. All right, so I showed you how to get the wallet set up, how to manage your balance over here, uh, showed you some settings on how you can uh, manage some of the uh, features of the wallet, and showed you how to export. Oh, notice when you're in the ledger that the export private key is non-functional, right? This only works for the standalone wallet. The private key for your wallet is, is stored in the ledger. It's inaccessible, right? That's part of the security of the ledger. Right. But if you flip back to main wallet, you can see that the uh, export private key is active again. All right. So just wanted to point that out. And then uh, like if, if I've got this third wallet, which I didn't do anything with, I could remove it if I didn't want to see it anymore. I could just remove this wallet. All right. So it's not in there anymore. I've just got these two functioning wallets. So it's a pretty versatile wallet. You can create new wallets. You can uh, send and receive Solana. You can make swaps. Uh, you can manage multiple wallets. You can create wallets that are connected to your ledger device, as long as you have the Solana app, all from right within your browser. So if you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.